Hello and welcome to the Stool Pigeons. I'm Jack James Wood. And I'm Harrison Davenport. Harrison, I think you have a story for us today. I do, Jack. So this is a prequel to the Mark on the Green story titled, The First Time I Saw Her Cheat. This story took place about nine years ago. My wife was in school full time and I was working around the clock trying to pay the bills so she could finish school. Because of this, we rarely went out and did a lot of things people our age did at the time. We still had our friends, but we rarely went out and had much fun. I guess we figured there would be time for that later. We both had separate vehicles. My wife would normally park closer to our apartment front door and I would normally park in our covered parking spot. She liked to park closer to the front door so she didn't have to walk as far at night when she got out of school. Earlier that week, she mentioned that one of her friends was going to have a birthday party that Friday night and she wanted to go celebrate at the girl's house. I told her she should absolutely go out and have some fun. I couldn't get the day off of work with such short notice. She said she was going to catch a ride with one of the other girls so she could drink a little bit if she wanted and still get home safe. I was working nights so I knew I would be up all night if she needed anything. So the night came for the party. My wife was getting dressed and I was getting ready for work. She put on a cute skin tight blue shirt and a skirt that hugged her butt perfectly. I remember thinking to myself how sexy she looked and how I wish I could take her to the party. I've never been a jealous person and as far as I could tell, it was going to be all girls at the party anyway. So there wasn't much to worry about in that regard. So I left first and I worked about 40 minutes from my house. I mostly worked alone at night doing security for a water treatment facility in the middle of nowhere. Most of the time I just slept at work to catch up on my sleep. I showed up at work and realized that they had double booked the shift. The other guy that was there told me he really needed the hours. So I called my boss and he told me I could go ahead and have the night off. I was pretty excited initially because I thought maybe there was a chance I could make it home and go with my wife to the party. I called her to see if she was still home, but I did not tell her that I was able to get the night off. Instead, I decided I would come home and surprise her. I got home and parked my truck on the back side of our building, assuming we would be leaving the house shortly after together. When I walked in the door, I realized that I was too late and she had already left for the party with her friend. Part of me was a little bummed out, but another part of me was kind of excited to have the evening to myself to just lay around and catch up on TV shows. As I laid around the house for a few hours, I texted my wife a few times to ask how the party was going. At this point, she still had no idea that I was at home. She told me everything was going good, and they were just having a few drinks and talking about old times in high school. As the night got later, I decided to jump in the shower. I thought she would be home soon and might be a little tipsy and want to have some fun. Another hour or so went by, and I decided to text her to see how things were going again. She didn't text me back right away, and it was getting pretty late, so I decided to give her a call. Again, I'm not really the jealous type but she usually texts me back right away. I just wanted to make sure everything was cool. She answered the phone and I could tell immediately she had been drinking. She was laughing and carrying on. She told me almost everyone had left the party already and that her ride took another girl to the store to get more alcohol, but that once she got back, she would be heading home. I told her to be safe and to call me when she got home and that I would see her in the morning. Roughly 30 minutes later, she texted me and said her friend wasn't back yet, but someone else was going to give her a ride back to the house. I told her to make sure that her ride wasn't drunk. In hindsight, I probably should have told her I was at home at this point and that I would just come get her, but I was really looking forward to surprising her. 20 minutes had passed and I began looking out the window to see if I could see a car pulling up. The window overlooked the parking lot in the front of the apartments, and I could see our parking spot was still empty because I had parked on the back side of our building earlier in the day. A few moments later, a gray Ford Bronco pulled through the parking lot really slowly. I watched as it pulled over to my covered parking space and backed in. I could see inside of the Bronco that there were two people, and one of them was my wife. The driver was a male that I didn't recognize. I felt my stomach tighten and my legs felt weak. I looked at my phone and there was a new text from my wife saying she was almost home. I remembered that she thought I was still at work. I went out the front door and down the stairs that led to the hallway that would take you to the front side or back side of the building. I made the decision to go around the backside so I could get closer to the vehicle without them noticing me. I crossed the street and walked behind a few rows of cars. I hid behind a concrete wall that covered the garbage cans, two spaces down from my covered parking space. At this point, the Bronco was turned off, but they were still sitting inside the vehicle. I could hear them talking, but couldn't make out what they were saying. I was wearing a pair of basketball shorts, flip-flops, and an undershirt. The apartment complex seemed so still for a Friday night. 
There didn't seem to be anyone out. I felt like I could hear a pin drop. I stayed quiet and leaned against the concrete wall watching the truck. A few moments later, it finally happened. I watched him lean over his seat toward my wife and try to kiss her. She pulled her head back and said something to him. He said something to her, and then she giggled under her breath. He then leaned in again, and this time she leaned forward. They began making out in the front seat of his Bronco. For about five seconds, I felt every hair on my body stand up. I was angry and confused, and part of me wanted to go smash out every window of the Bronco and drag him across the parking lot. Watching for a moment and not reacting, I began to withdraw from that idea. Suddenly, I found myself strangely aroused watching the two of them make out and touch each other. This went on for a few minutes before things started to escalate. She quickly backed up and said something to him. This time, I could hear him clearly say, nobody can see us. He then folded his driver's seat back toward the back bench seat. His seat was laid all the way back and she was in the passenger seat turned towards him. She then pulled his pants or shorts to the ground. It was a little difficult to see her face because of the angle I was at. She leaned over him again and was halfway on top of him. She kissed him before slowly working her way towards the steering wheel. I could no longer see any of their faces. I could only see her head slowly moving up and down with his hand caressing the back of her neck. I could hear him breathing heavier and a few low noises coming from her. I'm not sure I've ever been more turned on in my entire life. Something about just hearing it made me so excited that I almost forgot that I was standing outside hiding behind a dumpster. There was no light directly on me, so I could not be seen by any of the apartment windows. After a few minutes, I heard her say, I have to go. He sat up and said, let's get in the back. Suddenly, his driver door popped open and he jumped out. She sat up in her seat and was looking at her hair in the rearview mirror. He was tall and skinny with light brown hair. He was white and had a good amount of muscle on him. He then pulled his seat all the way forward and began climbing into the back bench seat of the Bronco. I could see her laugh as she fumbled her way between the two seats into the back with him. I watched as the two of them shuffled around in the back seat for a few moments. My eyes were locked on anything I could see moving around in the back. From what I could tell, my wife was lying flat on her back and he was lying on top of her. I could tell things were starting to go down based on the sounds coming from the car. I could see the car slightly rocking around as he was sitting up almost all the way. She was breathing heavily, but was still not making much noise. Her hand reached out grabbing the bottom of the rail by the window. She then turned back around and I could hear her say clearly, go slow. His response was the complete opposite of slow. I could see the car rocking rapidly back and forth. Again, I did not have the best views of this. It was mostly shapes and sounds, but a little bit of light would creep in and I could see his shoulders and her back. This continued for a few minutes before I heard the noises start to get louder. The car shook rapidly for at least 10 minutes before the movement of the car started to slow. I heard both of them let out loud noises and saw her turn around and kiss him again. I didn't stick around any longer and began heading back to the apartment building. I ran up the stairs and into the apartment before turning off the hallway light and jumped into my bed. I laid there for about five minutes excited from what I just witnessed. I didn't know how I was going to react once my wife walked in. I was excited, angry, sad, but was also so into it that I could hardly breathe. I could hear his truck start and pull away. Then I heard the front door open and close. She must have realized at this point I was home because she said, babe, are you home? I pretended to be half asleep and said I was in the room. She walked back and I told her I came home early because there was a mix up. She seemed nervous and must have been wondering if I saw any of what had just gone down. She grabbed a towel and a pair of sweatpants from the drawer and started walking towards the bathroom. I was too worked up and wasn't going to wait. I stood up and followed her to the restroom. I pretended I needed to use the bathroom. When I got behind her, I hugged her from behind and could see her makeup was a mess and her hair was wild. I unzipped her skirt and as she leaned forward on the sink. We both realized at the same time that she didn't put her underwear back on. Both of us stayed quiet as we started what she had just finished with someone else a few minutes earlier. I only lasted for about 30 seconds. She then showered and I went to sleep. We never talked about that night again, and I honestly don't think she knows that I saw her with him. So Jack, did we have any comments? Yes, we did. Uh, the first one comes from Seaweed Fun 180 and he says, Thanks for sharing your stories. Did you ever tell her 
that you like watching her affair. And Mark on the Green says, no, she would probably leave me. Ha ha. And then there's a string of back and forth between Mark on the Green and Vel Vivian V. Uh, it begins, I believe her little escapades in a weird and twisted way makes you love her even more. Mark on the Green responds, haha, it definitely adds spice. Vel Vivian Veek responds, how did she react the next morning and coming days after that night? Was her behavior weird or nonchalant? In her mind, she must have been ruminating whether you saw something or not. Even if she acted like nothing happened, surely she must have felt guilty, as it looked like it was one of her first or maybe even the first time she cheated on you. Mark on the Green responds, she acted normal. There is a little more to the story that happened a few weeks later, but it's not enough to really write a whole chapter about, so I don't know where to tell it. Also, this wasn't the first time she cheated, this was just the first time I watched her do it. To which Belle Vivian Beek responds, come on man, you can't hold off. If you're not planning on writing the remaining part of the story as a separate post, you can tell it here now. Mark responds, haha, I will figure out where to put it. And this continues with the commenter, Good then, can I ask, how is the relationship between you two currently? Has she mellowed down on her little escapades, or is it still going on in some form? Though I doubt with COVID and everything, she would have many opportunities available. Mark responds, As far as I know, she is still into it. About four months ago, there was a juicy story. To which Val Vivian Veek responds, Bro, I know you like her little escapades and it spices up the marriage from your perspective. But it looks like she's somewhat of a serial cheater, and it must affect you emotionally at some level after the initial thrill does. Am I right or wrong? To which Mark responds, wrong. When I was younger, it affected me at first. But like I said before, everyone wants to experience multiple partners in life sexually. Her and I have been together since we were freshmen in high school, so if we were ever going to explore other people in a sexual way, what is wrong with doing it just for sex? I say let her get it out of her system, and we just have a happy marriage. It's all perspective. So Harrison, another Mark on the Green story. Uh, this one gives us a little bit more context and backstory into his life and how his desires and kind of worldview were shaped. Yeah, I like that we got a look into the beginning of when this happened because i feel like when a lot of people comment our post they don't necessarily understand mark on the green as a character and so i think this is important for them to actually get a look into how he reacted at first because it wasn't just like pure ecstasy for him it was a lot of confusion before kind of realizing oh okay maybe this is a bit of like a sexual awakening for me because i kind of understand what's going on even though it makes me mad i still understand where she's coming from and why she's doing this i guess the only thing that i hope is as he continues to write is to see what her reaction would be if he tells her about this sexual fetish that he has uh watching her because i actually kind of think that she would react positively because he seems to love his wife quite a bit yeah but he does always add that she would kill him if she found out so i don't know because he always does include that in his post when usually commenters say something and he's like she would kill me if she found out i set this up well hopefully mark uh, green explores that in a, another story but another triumph for mark on the green and you know i was a little bit hesitant to do the prequel story because like most prequels including the star wars prequel most of them are not very good but mark on the green really gives us a background and good insight into his life and how his desires and fantasies and relationship with his wife evolved over time yes no yeah i i'm glad we got to get the prequel i thought that was really important for the story because Mark on the Green is uh, a man who has a lot of stories. I think we can, uh, that's the safest way to say it. And a clear wor worldview. Um, so Harrison, I think that's going to do us for today. Do you want to get out of here? Yeah, that sounds good. But before we get out of here, I just wanted to throw a few reminders out there. Uh, remind everyone that we have started putting some videos on Patreon. Uh, so those are available to you. So just check out the Stool Pitches on Patreon. We have it linked to our account. And we'd like to thank uh, some of the subscribers that have made their way over and subscribe to the Patreon. We appreciate that. It helps us keep doing this. And but, Harrison, you uh, might want to give them some context on to why we're putting some of the videos on Patreon. 
Patreon, just if the listeners are curious. So the reason we're putting some of the videos on Patreon, on Patreon, we can give you the uncensored view of the stories. There is nothing that cannot be said on Patreon. YouTube, there are certain rules and certain things we cannot say. So if you want the fully unedited, unfiltered stories, you can head over to Patreon. But if you would like the unfiltered, uncensored uh, version, we can do that for you on Patreon. We're trying to figure out how many viewers have an interest in doing that. So if we get more people to move over to our Patreon page, we'll put up more, more content. We're trying to just gauge the demand for that. Yeah, I mean, frankly, we have our goals set there. But I mean, if we hell, if we hit a certain limit, we might let Mark on the green read one of his own stories. Okay, well, Harrison, let's get out of here. Thank you for listening.